The very sight of this historic Pumban bridge, which connects Mandapam to Lord Shiva's abode on Rameshwaram, captivates you. But the propensity to surprise inherent in this milieu continues. This time, it is not an engineering marvel, but a group of village women earning their livelihood from the sea by farming jewels. This is the story of a women's self-help group in Mundal Munai village beneath the Pumban Bridge. These women, braving the sea and technological barriers, have been able to discover a livelihood with the help of a scientific organization and a civil society network. <laughs> Narratives of yesteryear may associate pearls with the princely class. Today, however, these women tell a different story in which a small village is able to find a livelihood from the luster of these pearls. மேதம் சிறப்பாக துவங்கப்பட்ட முத்து சலாபத்தில் பாம்பையிலிருந்தும் சென்னையிலிருந்தும் கீழக்கரை காயல்பட்டினம் முதலிய இடங்களிலிருந்து பெரிய பணக்காரர்கள் வந்து அதை கலந்து கொண்டார்கள் அந்த முறையிலே அவர்கள் முத்து சலாபத்தில் ஆயிஸ்டேட்ஸ் அல்லது சிப்பிகளை கடலில் இருந்து எடுத்துக்கொண்டு வருவார்கள் அந்த சமயத்திலே ஒரு மோடைக்கு சுமாராக நூறு ரூபாயிலிருந்து ஐநூறு ரூபாய் வரை ஒரு மோடையினுடைய விலை போகும் அந்த மூடையெல்லாம் எடுத்து கொண்டு போய் அங்கே கடற்கரையிலே பெரிய தொட்டிகள் போடுவோம் அந்த தொட்டியிலே அந்த மூடைகளை ஒரு ஒரு நாலஞ்சு நாடுகளுக்கு அதை அழுக வைப்பார்கள் அழுக வைத்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் அதை வந்து பிரித்து ஆயிஸ்டேட்ஸிலிருந்து முத்து சிப்பியிலிருந்து அதை பிரித்து எடுத்து அவர்கள் அதையெல்லாம் முத்து முத்து திரும்ப கேதர் பண்ணுவார்கள் தூத்துக்குடி துறைமுகத்தில் எடுத்த முத்துகள் தான் மிகவும் பிரபலமானவை அவைகள் மற்ற அந்நிய நாட்டுக்கு போகும் பொழுது இவர்களுக்கு விலை கூடுதலாக கிடைத்தது பாம்பே வியாபாரிகளுக்கு மற்ற பஸ்ரா ஆப்பிரிக்கா போன்ற இடங்களிலே எடுத்த முத்துக்கள் இதை விட லஸ்டர் குறைந்ததாகவே இருக்கின்றன என்பதை நாம் கண்கூடாக பார்த்துருக்கிறோம் அதுலேயும் பெரிய முத்துக்களை எடுக்கும் பொழுது பெரிய முத்துக்களெல்லாம் ஒரு முத்து வந்து அதுக்கு கேரட் என்று சொல்வார்கள் அதுக்கெல்லாம் ஒரு ஒரு கேரட் முத்து கூட கிட்டத்தட்ட பத்தாயிரம் ரூபாய்க்கு விட்டதாக நாங்கள் கேள்விப்பட்டோம் The Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, or CMFRI, under the Indian Council for Agricultural Research, has charted a new avenue in farming jewels from the sea through marine culture. The frantic search for fortunes from seabeds had resulted in the dwindling of pearl oysters, and the government had banned pearl fishing from seabeds. To meet the demand for pearls, CMFRI has been able to provide alternative means by developing a technology for marine pearl culture. Here, oysters are reared in laboratories and induced to mature by providing special feeds and temperature shock. On spawning, the larvae are reared to the young ones called spat and then transferred to a sea farm to grow.
These oysters are then brought back to the laboratories where, with the application of chemicals like menthol, they are induced to open their valves. A few are prized open and their mantles are removed. Each such mantle is cut into pieces that are about two square millimetres. This mantle, which secretes the nacre that becomes a pearl, is then inserted together with a shell bead nucleus into a conditioned oyster. Specially designed surgical instruments are used and the oyster is mounted on an oyster stand for the procedure. After this, the oysters are placed in seawater and within 30 minutes the oyster resumes its normal functions. The oysters are then placed for convalescence in netlon baskets and hung in tanks containing aerated seawater for two to three days. These oysters are then placed in cages, numbered with plastic tokens, and transferred to rafts or racks in farms. To obtain pearls of good quality, Oysters should be grown at depths of 5 to 10 metres in the sea. After 4 to 6 months the oysters are taken out and the pearls are harvested. The value of a pearl is determined by its shape, size, colour, luster and the thickness of its nacre. A high quality marine pearl will cost 1500 rupees a gram. Pearl mariculture was considered as one of the major research program under National Agriculture Technology program in coastal agro ecosystem. The major thrust was given for upgrading the present pearl culture technology and also to develop a larger sized pearl oysters and to develop tissue culture technology and also to uh, develop a viable technology for production of pearl nucleus from the indigenous shells available in India. An advanced research has been taken up at uh, Sima Farai. Uh, uh, to produce a pearl in the laboratory itself. In this technique, we are using a piece of mantle from the pearl oyster as well as abalone also. Both we have developed and the mantle tissue is being cultured in the laboratory and uh, from the tissue, all the cells are epithelial cells are coming out and that will form the pearl sac and organic matrix and uh, nacreous layer. The, nacre, the formation of nacreous layer is a stepping stone for the production of laboratory bed.
The technique of culturing pearls has been refined and modified to make mebe or image pearls. These are miniature images of anything dear to ban, like Lord Ganesha, coated with pearly nacre. This involves the use of calcium carbonate powder with resin gum to make a semi-solid substance which is moulded into a base image. This image is inserted into the oyster in a much simpler way than the shell bead nucleus. Within two months, it can be harvested. These images are then converted into beautiful high-value lockets and rings. To meet the international demand for large symmetrical pearls, Scientists have found that culturing pearl oysters along the southwest coast of India can produce larger oysters and thus larger pearls. In another technological intervention, scientists of CMFRI have been able to create pearls of different hues. In this process, nucleated oysters are fed a diet containing iron, cobalt or manganese and each of these metals imparts a different colour to the pearl. In the heart of every pearl, there is a shell bead nucleus. These are manufactured from mollusk shells. Under the NATP, the Central Institute of Fisheries Technology, has now developed a mechanical process with computer-aided design, which converts shell pieces from indigenous mollusks into polished beads of varying diameters. This indigenous effort will end India's dependence on shell beads imported from Hong Kong, Japan and Taiwan. The southeast coast of India has been a hyperactive zone all through history and this has unsettled its ecological balance. To promote sustainable alternative livelihoods for fisher folk, the MS Swaminathan Research Foundation has been promoting many ventures in the Gulf of Mana biosphere. We have selected one Mundal Munne village near that hamlet of Palm and Revenue village. This we have mobilized the people to form a community based societies. In this society, each family, one woman and one female member are joined. So, they are joined together and form a society and the society is registered. They got a training from Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute. So, they got an agreement to supply the nucleated ISTs. They buy the nucleated ISTs from CMFRI and growing them in their farms and the seas. We have planned to establish three clusters in the coastline of Gulf of Mannar. Each cluster has three villages. In each village, 10 family will be involved in the agriculture program. So totally, 90 family will be involved in the agriculture program. 
ஆமா இதுல செய்யற மாதிரி இன்ன ஒரு 10 குடும்ப இதுல முன்னேறி இத கத்துக்கிறதுன்னு சொல்லி சொன்னா கொஞ்சம் அதுகள கொஞ்சம் வாழ்க்கையில முன்னேறற மாதிரி இருக்கும்ல ஒரு தொழிலையும் கத்துக்கிறது மாதிரி இருக்கு Govindama and Surya Kala are among the enterprising women of Mundalmunai village who have shown that their future is secure through their unique synergy with a technological institution and a civil society network. Their success story will be a beacon to guide many others. Thank you.